Blockbuster Tech here and today this is the full review of the iPhone XR. Now I've been using this for a month exactly so October 2nd 2019 I unboxed it although I ended up posting the unboxing way later because I was just lazy to edit the video. But yeah laziness aside this is my full one month in review of the iPhone XR and why Google should be ashamed of it. So without further ado let's begin. So yes, I have spent enough time with this device to know all of its strengths, its weaknesses and without a doubt this is the best smartphone I have ever used in my life. So first off, let's talk about design. So yes, I did get the white color of the phone. The glass sandwich just molds together to form a very very solid feeling and looking device. And the bezel is display up front. It's just a delight to look at. I know it's LCD, it had the controversies when it came out. But once people actually got it in their hand, they realized that specs aren't everything. You shouldn't go by the resolution of the display because there is more than just the resolution. There's pixel per inch. And there's even the retina technology, which is combining four into one. So four pixels into one pixel. And the retina architecture has really, really improved this. This is by far the best LCD I've ever seen on a smartphone. And brightness levels are up there. They're really, really bright and it doesn't get all that dark. <coughs> this display can go up to a brightness of 650 nits, which is 150 nits more than the Pixel 4. And yeah, overall, I've been really, really impressed with this display, the design of the phone. And yes, it is a heavy and big phone. I mean, there's there's no luck trying to use it with the only one in your hand. So this is a two-handed phone by all means. So yeah, it's supposed to use it with both your hands because this is a 6.1 inch display, which is pretty big, you know. Okay, so moving on from design, now let's talk performance. And this thing has impressed me. Like, wow, I can assure you, I have experienced zero lag on this device. Like, not even a single stutter that I've seen, none of that here. It's just smooth. The A12 Bionic is still beating out processors like the A55 Plus. It's just insane how performance hungry this thing is. It's just, it can play games at really, really high settings. I open up PUBG and it defaulted to high and HDR settings, which is really, really good. Call of Duty Mobile also ran pretty good on this thing. And overall, just multitasking in general is smooth. It's buttery. There's no lag. There's no slowdowns. It's just it maintains its pace and they even doubled up the ram it's now three gigs on this model and it's amazing at keeping apps in the background as well it doesn't quit them randomly you know something you can't say for every other smartphone out there can you and just day-to-day -day performance has been very smooth very fast launching apps is now extremely extremely fast and also face id has improved its speed with ios 13. it now unlocks 30 percent faster than on ios 12. you know it's kind of creepy that they just be able to improve face id with a software update but yeah they did it and face id is extremely fast it doesn't wait for you to look at your irises or use some radar tech that isn't even available or allowed here in some countries none of that stuff here it's face id and it works that's it it works in really really dark conditions as well i found myself using the phone in the night a lot so yeah that was nice to have in terms of design and performance i think they could have improved a little bit with the design and removed the apple logo and the iphone text i just feel like that would have looked really really seamless and nice with the white color they should have removed the really apple logo here and also the iphone text my opinion you know they can do whatever they want okay so moving on to the camera or camera as i should say because in the back there is only one camera and yes this was the 2018 model that came across the iphone 10s and just to bring down the price to the second camera off. Now this main camera is still the exact same lens that's found on the iPhone XS and XS Max. The main lens I might add. The telephoto lens is however not here. And I have been impressed from the day I got this phone. Like coming from an iPhone SE to this device, a very very nice upgrade. So first off, in terms of photos, you get portrait mode. So you can blur out the background with only a single lens. You don't need double 
or triple lenses to do that anymore. And also, video gets 4K at 60 frames per second. <coughs> Google. And yeah, videos have been really, really crisp and super smooth with 4K at 60. Here's a little sample I'll throw in there. It's really, really detailed, really smooth. And some of the tech videos were also shot in 4K at 60. So hope you watch that. And now I'll just throw in some sample shots as you see. I took all these pictures with the 10R. And it has me impressed from right to left. I mean, it takes detailed, very, very sharp, and very color accurate pictures, you know? That's very important when you're looking at smartphone cameras is that it needs to be something resembling the actual subject that you're focusing on. See, so yeah, I think that's what the Tenor really gets right. It's the colors. I think the color science is really up there. And they've done an amazing job with the camera. And also the speakers is something I should give a horrible mention to because, wow, these things get loud. So the speakers get extremely loud, extremely clear. The stereo speakers, so you have one from the bottom over here. And also this, the other speaker is up here in the earpiece, which is a smart idea. Nothing new, we have had this from the 7, but you know, horrible mention, sounds great. And while we're on the topic of audio, yes, there is no headphone jack. Yeah. Now, for me personally, I know this might be up for debate, but I did not miss the headphone jack one bit. I feel, I feel, yes, first of all, it's future. And second off, I really don't use any other headphones than the included ear pods that come with every iPhone. So yeah, it's kind of perfect. I just plug it in. There's very few instances where I need to charge the phone and also listen to music at the same time. So yeah, it was really not a problem for me at least. I know many people like to bring up how headphone jack is useful to them somehow, but me personally, I don't see much use for it anymore. It's not like I used it much on my SE anyways, but yeah, it's gone here. That's something to note, but, but I don't give a crap about it. It's fine. They can remove the lightning pole if you want. I just use it with the Qi charger all the time. So yeah, now talking about charging, let's move on to the back. And boy, there is a reason that Apple called the 10R the best battery performer of last year, mind you. That was for a reason. This thing lasts all day. It's insane. Now, I found out that I wasn't really giving a accurate representation of the battery life on this thing because I was just so used to going to my desk and then placing this thing on the tea charger. That's like the first thing I do all the time. Even if it's juiced up full all the way or it's it's completely dead. So yeah, I decided to do a day where I did not put this thing on a Qi charger even once. I, I used it the whole day. I started off with 100%. I used it the whole day without without putting it on any sort of a Qi charger or any charger at, or any charger at least. And I got really, really impressed with numbers. And I'm comfortably getting more than 7 hours of screen on time with this. I mean, it's, it's great. And also adding to the convenience is Qi charging. I've been using it exclusively with Qi charging at least, you know, for the past two weeks. Since I got my both Qi chargers, I have one at my nightstand and one at my desk. So yeah, I've been continuously using it with Qi charging exclusively and that just adds to the experience. So yeah, that's what I thought about this device right here. I mean, there's nothing really to take away from this, but I'm just saying, don't get the Pixel 4, get this. Okay, all jokes aside, this has been an amazing smartphone, okay? There's no getting through it. This is the best smartphone I've ever used, and it will continue to be my daily driver until a long time. So, yeah, looking forward to some really, really crispy 4K videos from now on. And yeah, that's pretty much it I have for you guys today. This is the Apple Sheep here, and I will see you on the next one.